In this video, we're going to look at redirecting delinquent customers to a splash page and dropping the rest of their traffic. And there's a few different ways we can implement this. And I'm going to show you a simple way, and then we'll talk about a couple of the other things that we can do. So this is fairly simple to set up. If you go to IP and then Firewall, and we go look in our address lists, you can see I have an address list called Test here with a number of IPs in it. Then I have an address list called Delinquent and I have an address list called whitelist. So I've made the whitelist one by hand, and what I'm doing is putting IPs in here that I always want my customers to be able to get to, regardless of whether or not they uh, are delinquent or being redirected or anything like that. And then I have my delinquent list that's being created by Sonar, and the only customers I have in here are customers that are delinquent. And you could get more precise there if you want to build a delinquency list that only has residential customers and not commercial customers in it, you could do that, but it's up to you. This is all built using the address list functionality in Sonar, and if you're not familiar with that, just take a look at some of the prior videos when we go through how that all works. So there's two sets of rules we need to build in here. The first one's a NAT rule, and if you look at my delinquent redirect rule here, it's fairly simple. My rule in the general tab is set to destination NAT, and I'm saying if the traffic is protocol TCP and it's destined for port 80, and if the source address is in my delinquent list, I want to redirect, do a destination at rule to this IP, which just happens to be the IP address for cheese.com. So when you're doing a redirect in Microtech, there's no way to say go to www.myisp.com slash redirect. You can only redirect to an IP. So whatever your destination is needs to be purely accessible by an IP address. This also will not work with HTTPS encrypted traffic. It won't work to redirect HTTPS pages to this redirect page, and it won't work if you try to redirect to an HTTPS page. This is only going to work with unencrypted traffic. But with this rule I have in here right now, if anyone in that delinquent list tries to go to port 80, then we're going to redirect them to this IP. So there's a couple of filter rules we want to put in here, and I have a number set up in here, but the first three are the only ones we really care about here. My first rule says, if somebody tries to get to port 53, then allow it. We need to allow people to do DNS lookups for this to work. Now this is a slightly dangerous rule, and the reason it's slightly dangerous is if any of your customers figure out that you're allowing port 53 traffic, they could technically set up something like a VPN to only operate on port 53, and they would still get online even if they're delinquent. So if you wanted to make this a little more secure, you could instead make an address list that contains your DNS servers, and instead of saying port 53 here, we would just come in and say if the destination address list is my DNS servers allow that. But uh, in my case here, uh, I don't know what DNS servers my customers are using, so I'm just allowing port 53. Next one's an accept rule for our whitelist, so I'm saying in my advanced section here, if the destination is whitelist, I want to accept it. Pretty easy. And then we have something here to drop the rest. So what this says is, uh, for protocol TCP, if the destination port is not 80, and my customer is in the delinquent list, drop it. And we'd want to make one more rule here. We also want to drop um, UDP. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look for UDP. And I'm going to say if the customer is in delinquent, and then I'm going to drop that as well because that doesn't fit into what I have explicitly allowed. So let's put a little comment here and we'll say drop UDP. Now, depending on your needs, you may need to be uh, putting more IPs into your whitelist, there may be more places you need to let your customers get to, or you may need to uh, build some more specific accept rules, you may need to build some more specific drop rules, but for a very basic setup, we're allowing DNS, we're allowing our whitelisted IPs, we're dropping everything that's not port 80 TCP, and we're dropping everything that's UDP, and then any customers that are in that delinquent list, we're redirecting to our splash page. So there's a couple of other things you may want to do in here. When we say drop the rest here, what you may want to do rather than saying if they're in the delinquent list, what we may want to do is really make an active list of all our customers that are supposed to be active and instead say if they're not in my active list, 
then I want to drop the traffic. Because the problem with this type of rule we have is it's very easy to implement for testing. And this is what I would do to just test this on your network. But what we're relying on is that the customers that we don't want to allow access to our network are in this delinquent list. Well, what if somebody gets connected to your network and you forget to set up billing and sonar for them, for example? They'll never go delinquent because you're not billing them, but they have access to the network. Uh, what we'd probably want to do instead is have something that looks at them as being explicitly authorized by the fact that they're active and they have a data service on their account or something like that. And you can build whatever makes sense for you with the address list tools and sonar, but uh, it's just a piece to think about. But anyway, that's a pretty simple way to get a redirect rule in place. You could use this for all kinds of things, redirecting delinquent customers or maybe people that got a DMCA complaint or really any reason you might want to redirect someone to a splash page. This is a quick and easy way to do it on a Microtik router.